Hello, this is Katie. In this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about flexible course delivery options. Anytime you're making a design decision uh, of any kind, you need to make sure you're considering your students um, and how they can be successful in our programs. Um, of course, meeting student needs is a is a win-win for enrollment as well. Um, but we're creating learning experiences for real people, so we need to know who they are. Uh, secondly, when we think of course delivery and course design um, in higher education, um, I thought that this learner hierarchy of needs was kind of interesting. Um, we obviously need functional, reliable, and usable courses, um, but convenience um, makes it a little bit easier for students and um, helps them to succeed. And then we're working towards pleasurable and meaningful. So um, we've got these high level uh, needs at the top and that's what we are looking to design and deliver for our students. Course design is based on critical course components aligning to the student learning outcomes. They form the base of all of the decisions that we make and uh, what do we need students to be able to do and how can we create learning experiences that help them meet the outcomes. So you may have seen something similar to this list of uh, events of instruction. So to me this is a little bit more about delivery than design, um, things that we might have typically done in the past in a face-to-face -face environment, now we have different techniques and, and tools that we can choose from and determine which of the uh, which of these things is, is um, best using either a face-to-face -face or a, an announcement in Blackboard or an activity or or your choice. So really thinking about these different things related to your students in your course will help you determine which of the things might be done um, in a time when you're synch synchronously meeting with the students at, uh, all at the same time um, or things that you could post into Blackboard, for example. So um, according to Quality Matters, design happens before the course begins. So now we're talking here about what happens when students enter the course. Um, and so we have uh, an issue, of course, is the students always don't always know what they're signing up for. So that um, has been improved. So coming um, this next semester, um, we have our um, schedulers have been trained in some new delivery modes to code as you're filling out your schedule for next semester. And they have given us an acronym which makes it easy to remember. Face-to-face -face in-person courses, that's a, a more traditional course. Online no set time is O, so that is what we might call asynchronous where there are no meetings. Um, and then the C and the U are the more flexible ones. So C being in-person and online, so a combination of in-person meetings and online meetings. Uh, versus you, which would be um, in person or online, meaning the student would be able to choose how they want to attend. And then S is online at a set time. So what we might call a, a, a Zoom class where we have um, synchronous meetings scheduled uh, weekly online all together with the students. So unpacking these just a little bit more, I've included some descriptions here um, of these, and I pulled these three out just because I think they're the most common, and I've just talked about those. Um, and then I'm going to switch over to the two uh, new, which are a little more flexible, and thinking about how um, these might fit with your particular students in your particular course and then also of course fitting in with the um, overall uh, plan for your program and um, notice that for C in person and online the students is, is expected to attend each meeting as scheduled uh, versus you which is in person or online the student has the option of attending meetings online or in person. So what does this mean for you and your planning? Well, 
you have to do more explicit planning when you're doing any kind of uh, delivery other than a very traditional one um, and everybody has to be on the same page so everybody has to know what they're expected to do the instructor and the students um, it's also going to require more technology and sometimes it's even going to require dual planning so instructor presence when you have a more flexible delivery, you really have to be active and visible in the course, and you have to do that in, in meaningful ways, and it has to really be planned. So um, you're gonna need to come up with some ways to encourage students to connect with you and each other. You're gonna wanna incorporate active learning, and that does not have to be um, in a face-to-face -face or synchronous way. There's a lot of tools and techniques that we have. Um, when recording mini lectures, you want to really be yourself and just be um, your voice, your face, so that students can get to know you, even if you don't have any face-to-face -face meetings. Um, you might also consider creating social spaces where you and your students can connect. And again, that might be using a technology tool, depending on what your uh, course is and what fits best. Um, and then you're going to want to uh, really pay attention to student progress, reaching out to students and um, making that connection. And then also, as we know, feedback is one of the top um, effective teaching strategies. And so if you follow an established grading timeline, like you're going to be grading student work within a week of the due date, for example, you want to be sure to provide timely feedback. And this is closely related to RSI, which stands for Regular and Substantive Interaction. And this graphic comes from uh, State University of New York, and it's a, it's a way to differentiate correspondence education from distance education, um, of course, related to money. So um, the Department of Education has more clearly defined regular and substantive interaction um, due to issues with uh, financial aid. And so, um, Basically, these are uh, this is the spectrum, and we were looking towards um, the right side here for really um, a lot of planned instructor presence and interaction within the course. Another important thing you're going to really want to think about before you start the class and put in your syllabus is what kind of policies and expectations um, do you have um, you know for yourself and for the students in the course in general so you know are you going to be recording the classes is that an option for students um, are you going to encourage students to keep their cameras on um, how are you going to explain that to students um, are you going to allow use of a back channel outside of of the normal uh, core tools for example so um, students choice um, or or encourage them to use the chat and zoom or is that um, not going to be encouraged and so on and then if you're allowing students choice which is can be great do you do you want to allow them to to just pick whether they're going to be an online student or a face-to-face -face student and stick to it or day by day um, one thing I can't stress enough is the importance of a classroom. If you're going to be teaching in a flexible way, you're going to really need to have the right size classroom with the right classroom technologies to make sure that everyone can participate equitably. Everybody can see, hear, and, and participate. With uh, So you're looking for room cameras, ceiling mics, room speakers, uh, additional monitors, ShareLink Pro, and you can find that on UAA's 25 Live and work with your scheduler um, to pick the right room. There is a little bit of window if you pick a room then you can go take a careful look at it, actually physically go there, test it out. Um, there's a window of time to change the room, work with your schedule on that and work with ITAV services uh, for tech help, learning a little bit about the basic troubleshooting, always have a backup plan. Um, we do have a lot of OWLs, which are those portable mic cameras. Those are not uh, gonna work very well in, in larger sized classrooms and um, can be a good backup plan in many cases. Um, then the other thing to think about, of course, is your instructional strategies and, and the technologies you're going to use uh, for instruction. And um, 
you can consider flipping the class, um, creating mini lectures and pre work so that when you're when you have synchronous time scheduled, you can be using that for uh, more applied activities. Um, if you're teaching synchronously online, I recommend a pretty fast paced agenda, keeping people engaged online. Uh, research shows that um, definitely after 10 minutes of not doing anything, um, people start to disengage and, and perhaps even in less. So um, keeping those students active doing things during those synchronous online sessions is important. And keep in mind UA has a lot of core tools that um, some are better for synchronous like Zoom, others are great uh, for asynchronous work so you can actually have uh, discussions that are not just text-based using things like Microsoft Flip, formerly Flipgrid, um, and VoiceThread discussions. Lots of choices and instructional designers can help you with those. Um, and then, of course, we still have our Blackboard LMS, and so I highly recommend that you use that for the base of everything. Um, all the content should be there, even if you have students in the room, rather than passing out papers or collecting papers. Um, make everything uh, digital and electronic. Um, make materials available early for students encouraging them to be prepared for class formatting everything for accessibility, uh, making sure that when you choose videos or create videos, they have accurate captions. Um, and as I said, using Blackboard as the home base where students know they can find everything. Even <clears throat> when you are meeting synchronously online, it can be a, a time saver to put any documents or activities in Blackboard so students always know where to find them, even when it's for a face-to-face -face or a Zoom session. So a couple of tips that are probably pretty obvious, um, being flexible and patient when teaching in a new and flexible way, um, knowing that it is not going to be perfect and there's going to be some changes or, or um, hiccups that are going to need to be resolved along the way. And ask your students throughout to tell you what's going well for them and what's not. Um, embrace technology. So it can be daunting uh, to adopt a new technology. Um, so start small um, and practice and get student feedback on that as well. Make sure that you are fully engaging all students, no matter how they are attending your courses, and also seek support. Find colleagues and staff that can help you be successful teaching in, in flexible design scenarios. A couple of other considerations, as I said, um, before and after <laughs> and during, always asking your students um, how things are going and what they need. Um, design for equity and inclusion, making sure that you are offering uh, things that will help our students succeed and build a community of learners. Also, again, fitting into your overall department strategic plan and the offerings is going to be important, making sure that students are able to complete their, their degrees in a timely manner, etc. And then, as I mentioned before, your administrative professionals have been trained on the new scheduling codes, so work with them. Um, if you are feeling a little unclear about some of these delivery modes, your students may too, since this is new. So I encourage you to use the scheduling note, work with your administrative professional to add a note as well to more clearly describe exactly the delivery method you are going to do. So again, at the point of registration, students know what they're getting into. Hopefully these tips have helped you and um, you can reach out for um, help with additional questions or follow-up as you're planning for the next semester's courses.